A bone fractures when it is subjected to greater stress than it can endure. In children, fractures are most often caused by trauma. The most common concern in fractures in children is the involvement of the growth plate. Fractures that involve the growth plate can cause a permanent deformity by interfering with normal bone growth. Child abuse should be considered when a child has multiple fractures at various stages of healing, spiral fractures or femur fractures when the child is less than one year old. Besides child abuse, risk factors for fractures in children include osteogenesis imperfecta, metastatic Ewing sarcoma, accidents, high-risk activities and lifestyle, and nutritional deficiencies, specifically of calcium and vitamin D. The treatment of a fracture differs with the location and the type of fracture. Knowing the types of fractures is essential in determining possible treatments and assessing the child for signs and symptoms specific to the fracture suspected. An incomplete or partial fracture is a fracture that doesn't go through the width of the bone. A complete fracture is a full separation of the bone into two or more parts. A simple or closed fracture is a fracture of the bone with the skin intact. A compound or open fracture is a fracture of the bone with the skin broken. The bone might or might not be protruding from the wound. A comminuted or splintered fracture occurs if the bone is broken into several fragments. A compression fracture means that there is a compression of the fractured bone by another bone. A spiral fracture is a twisted or circular break in a bone. A green stick fracture is an incomplete fracture on one side of the bone with a buckling deformity on the other side of the bone. This is the most common type of fracture in children less than three years old. Signs and symptoms of a fracture differ with the type of fracture. Generally, signs and symptoms of a fracture include pain, tenderness, swelling, and deformity at the fracture site. Decreased function, abnormal mobility, and muscular rigidity or spasm may also be seen in the limb or the area near the fracture. You might also find crepitus and ecchymosis distal to the fracture site. Diagnostic tests when a fracture is suspected include history, physical, and x-ray. A bone scan or MRI might also be ordered. Your nursing care for the child who has a fracture is aimed at immobilizing the fracture site, assessing neurovascular status frequently, as even mildly displaced fractures can result in neurosensory impairment, pain management, prevention of complications, and rehabilitation. After an injury, you'd provide the first aid, stabilize the child, and immobilize any suspected fracture area by splinting it to minimize movement. Stabilization would include controlling any bleeding from a compound fracture or other soft tissue injury. You'd assess the child for pain and manage the pain with both pharmacological and non-pharmacological measures. This includes elevating the affected area if possible, applying ice to the fracture, and keeping the child warm. You'd also start preparing the child and the family for the possibility of an open or closed reduction of the fracture. If the child is discharged from the emergency department with a cast, you should instruct the parents in cast care, skin assessment, skin care, neurovascular assessment, the importance of rice, rest, ice, compression, and elevation, and the use of medications as prescribed. You might want to provide the child with a sling. This is often forgotten after a child's upper extremity is splinted or casted. For the child who has a more severe fracture, an open reduction and traction might be required. In caring for these children, you'd be responsible for cast care, neurovascular checks, maintaining traction, managing pain, providing skin care, and providing age-appropriate diversionary activities. Medication for children who have fractures include analgesics, antibiotics to prevent infections, and stool softeners or laxatives to prevent or treat constipation in those whose mobility is impaired. It is also important to focus on prevention of complications from the fracture, surgery, casting, traction, or immobility. Possible complications in children who have fractures include skin breakdown from inactivity, casts, or traction, neurovascular compromise, complications associated with immobility, embolism, either fat or pulmonary, compartment syndrome, that's swelling that causes pressure within a closed space, gangrene, contracture, refracture, limb deformity, leg length discrepancy, alteration in movement and or sensation, damage to a joint if a joint is involved, altered growth if the growth plate is involved, and infection from a compound fracture or postoperatively.